the back! This is 1989's Things. Okay, so this movie is so epic, it stopped an explosion. We're in for something crazy. Doug, our protagonist, asks a pink tank top wearing demon doing her laundry to have his baby. Luckily, she thought ahead and had it already. I never knew having a baby involved slowly taking off your clothes, creepily laughing, and this strange pronunciation of baby. Darling, I want you to have my baby. What follows is a credit sequence that rivals Birdemic for its sheer amount of driving. The only way to follow up that opening sequence is a newscast, anchored by the biggest hair the 80s had to offer. Doug's buddies, Fred and Don, show up to his well-appointed house and raid the freezer, where they find a tape recorder, and it's taken pretty seriously. You better turn it off, I think I'm being possessed. <laughs> this leads to a discussion that anyone who's worked at a video store can relate to. How'd that movie start that you're always talking about? You know, that weird one with all those weird things. Then there's this really random tangent. Hmm, yep, it is plastic. And breaking news. Dr. Lucas has discovered that if the human brain is exposed to ultraviolet light, a human's lifespan will double. Afterward, we find Dr. Lucas poking at a festering wound with a fondue fork. He may have a combination clinic and mask emporium, but damn if he doesn't offer an incredibly positive work environment. A job well done, bitch. This movie offers a thought-provoking conundrum about the perspectives of cinema. What a bunch of trash. This company puts out the cheapest crap I've ever seen. <laughs> if we use things as a baseline, what the fuck do these guys consider to be bad? Luckily, the daunting prospect of finding an answer comes to an end with the newest variation of Everything is Cake. Where everything is cake except for this guy's neck, which might very well be for the best. Back at Casa del Doug, there's a riveting scene with a drinking bird, and a reminder that the Foley guy is committed to make sure you hear every background noise clearly. Including this fart belch combo set to a jaunty theme. <laughs> they sit around tossing a bottle cap, and Doug's wife gives birth to a chest burster. I think? Honestly, I'm not 100% sure, but it's clear that she definitely had the space special. Waitress! What did he order? Oh, he had a special. That's what I ordered! I changed my order for the soup! Good move. Doug ends up with a killer ant infestation because he and his wife went the mad scientist route for having a kid. Don empathizes by giving a spoiler-filled description of a completely unrelated book. An off-camera Fred gets pulled into a mouse hole. I think he went into the third, fourth, and fifth dimension. It looks like he got sucked into that mouse hole. Luckily, we do get some topless Doug action out of the deal. Followed by... How do you get paper children? Paper children? Yeah, how do you get them? You fuck a bag, lady. I'll admit, I had to stop watching for a sec and ponder the deeper meaning of that joke. I'm grateful the random drinking bird shot pulled me out of that bottomless pit of stupidity. There's a subtle product placement for bounty paper towels, and our heroes get back to tracking those six-legged many-toothed creatures. Until the air suddenly leaves the hallway. Or something. They spot a toothed ant using the shitter, and Doug goes a little mad. <laughs> responding correctly. I guess he had the space special too. Doug and Don go to the basement to get the power back on, and Don accidentally clocks Doug. Insult him. Ah, oh, put your back down, you're so heavy. And then fumbles with the fuses. I better watch myself, I'm not very good at electricity things. Despite all the blood in this movie, Don's amazing blue sweatshirt stays clean. Until he grabs a drill and starts to do non-drill stuff with it. He sees an undead dog and passes out. After getting comfortable, he wakes up to find a resurrected Fred killing every tooth ant in sight with a super fakey chainsaw. He proceeds to get locked in a bedroom and continues to narrate as he's eaten. I'm over here! And, and over there, and, and over and over there too. Smiling Dr. Lucas shows up and accusations fly as the drinking bird watches on. 
Don tosses him in a closet and gets a little bit dramatic. Creatures with no soul are devouring me! Other shit happens, and Don tries to come to terms with it as much as we are. Sensing this, the movie reminds us that what we experience is definitely a thing. Lots of news outlets are thanked, then people were thanked, and then there are extra special thanks. Followed by outtakes from Amber Lynn, complete with subliminal posters of movies done by Barry J. Gillis. So Things is a 1989 Canadian direct-to-video horror film written by Andrew Jordan and Barry Gillis. It was reportedly the first Canadian Super 8 gore shocker commercially released on VHS. Now try saying that five times fast. Porn star Amber Lynn was brought on after principal photography was completed to boost VHS and DVD sales, and her cue card reading scenes certainly added to the memorable nature of this movie. So I really don't know what to say about things. I found out about it through the dual awesomeness of The Last Drive-In on Shudder and Red Letter Media's Half in the Bag. I highly suggest checking out both. Now, Thinks has been called one of the worst movies of all time. While I think that's an incredibly hard claim to make for any movie, I will say this is one of the least coherent. IMDb describes this one as an impotent husband driven by a fanatical desire to father children, forcing his wife to undergo a dangerous experiment. The result, a birth of a multitude of monstrous things. But I'm really not sure that covers it. Cause none of that happens on camera really. Straight up, I'm not sure anything in this movie is done fanatically. They get more pissed off about being out of beer. Everyone alive in this house knows that there ain't no beers. Than at the apparent terrors that they're up against. I can't even tell you if these monstrous things are aliens, demons, or just mutant bugs. There was clear inspiration taken from Alien and Evil Dead, but I see a lot of similarities to Feeders. While both are goofy, low budget things, Feeders actually had some kind of story that could be followed. Give me weird misshapen tiny alien puppets to toothy chestburster alien ants any day. Now having said this, the movie is not without its charms. Things has some random, really funny bits that made me burst out laughing unexpectedly. And it wasn't just a terrible foley work. <laughs> Although if I said they didn't help, I'd be lying. 80% of the conversation has absolutely fuck all to do with the fight of their lives. In fact, I think they spend as much time asking about beer as they do discussing their predicament with absolutely atrocious ADR. Its budget was around $30,000 Canadian. I'm thinking most of it went to beer because a lot of it was drunk on camera, and I imagine quite a bit was put back behind the scenes. Either way, I know I didn't drink enough to make any sense of this craziness. Despite everything, it still manages to be entertaining on levels I can't even begin to explain. For a movie that leaves you saying what the fuck, and yet randomly laughing in equal measure, you really can't go wrong with things. So what do you think? Suggestions for movies? Trivial questions? Comments, ratings, and more mullet-having, blue sweatshirt-wearing heroes in movies would be appreciated. Thank you so very much for watching.